My name is Paul Hilton. I'm a conservation photojournalist. It's hard to know where to start, but for many years I've travelled the globe, highlighting important issues that I feel will ultimately affect all of us. People often ask me how I got started, and I put it down to growing up in far north Queensland. It gave me a real strong appreciation of the natural world. The country got into my blood and it shaped my life. At that point I never looked back from the warm tropical reefs to the great expanse of the central Pacific Ocean, to deserts of Inner Mongolia and Antarctica. I spent many months following wild elephants in the equatorial jungles of the world, coming face to face with Sumatran orangutans. swimming with sperm whales and humpback whales. I've lived a truly privileged life. My first real assignment was with Animals Asia Foundation. They rescue bears, rehabilitate them from the horrendous bear bile farms in China and Vietnam. A practice where they use steel catheters to drain bile out of the bears on a daily basis. At the same time, they're forced to live in crusher cages to date, this is one of the cruelest practices I've ever witnessed. This is Andrew, the first bear that was rescued and operated on to remove the steel catheter. This image was published in National Geographic magazine and created worldwide exposure on the practice. At the same time, I was living in Hong Kong, working for one of the press agencies. My job was to create photo features on the streets of Hong Kong and China. During this time, I can recall walking past shop front after shop front with piles of dried shark fin. I remember thinking to myself, if those sharks are alive, what would that look like? I'm talking about thousands of fins. The project Man and Shark was born. I spent the best part of 10 years following the shark fin trade. I wanted people to understand that when they sat down for a bowl of shark fin soup, they understood what they were really supporting. I traveled from the beaches of Africa to the Middle East and Asia, documenting shark fisheries, shark finning. Man and Shark was the first bilingual book and documentary to look at the cruel practice of shark finning. This body of work was awarded a World Press Photo Award and helped highlight the issue globally. Sadly, it still exists today. Over 100 million sharks are killed annually. At the same time, I started to see manta rays lined up in fishing markets and they were being targeted for the gills for traditional medicine. Before this, I'd only seen mantas out in the blue gliding along coral reefs. That took me to the southern China where I exposed the scale of the trade and worked on the ever first DNA survey of the dry seafood markets in Hong Kong and southern China. In 2013, this information helped get them listed and protected under CITES the Convention of International Trade in Endangered Species, ultimately leading to better protection globally. During this time, I turned my lens also to the palm oil issue on the island of Sumatra, Indonesia. Tropical forests were being cleared at an alarming rate for palm oil expansion, particularly in the Losa ecosystem, the last place on earth where orangutans, tigers, elephants and rhinos still coexist under the same canopy. Given the size of the ecosystem, it was really the last place to have viable breeding populations of these iconic species. At the same time, they were classified as critically endangered due to habitat loss and poaching. Presently, 50% of products on supermarket shelves contain palm oil, representing so much destruction of these global biodiversity hotspots. In 2016, I spent three years following the pangolin trade, the most highly traded mammal on the planet, all eight species are targeted. In Asia now, their numbers are dwindling. Now, four species in Africa are being targeted. Their scales are wrongly believed to treat a variety of ailments for the use in traditional medicine. In April of that year, I was on assignment for WCS, covering a pangolin bus. But nothing really prepared me for what I was about to see. Some 4,000 defrosting pangolins hidden in a shipping container behind a facade of frozen fish all destined for the markets in China and Vietnam for the exotic meat trade and use in traditional medicine. It was one of the largest seizures on record, 
wildlife crime is big business. That morning, being there, looking at those pangolins, looking at the loss of life, looking at how wasteful we as a race have become. I took those photographs, but that image will never leave me. Many images in my career will never leave me, but it's what I do. But surely there's a better way. For 10 years, I've worked as a photographer on many Greenpeace campaigns, documenting overfishing in the Pacific Ocean pole and line fisheries, one man, one fish. I've seen how these fisheries, if done right, can support small coastal communities in a sustainable way. But that leads me on to Australia. I've returned to find a country in crisis. I ask myself, why is Australia cutting down more trees than any other first world country? 50 million trees are lost each year. We are losing iconic species like the koala, fast tracking towards extinction, closer with every tree that is lost. The climate crisis is real and is happening faster than most scientists predicted. Why are we cutting down our native forests? Surely leaving trees in the ground would be the first step to mitigate climate change in this country. Come with us on a journey, Callum under the documentary plans to explore the forest destruction across Australia. We seek a better way to preserve, protect, to support the diverse life here by finding solutions to support our forests. We ultimately protect the biodiversity in ourselves. Our story aims to communicate the reality and challenges in times of the climate crisis with a goal to provide alternative solutions for a more responsible world. We all have our part to play and collectively we can make a difference together.